be player I can match you with my first chaotic video. It's a real video for anyone who doesn't fully understand the rules of chaotic. So, these are a bunch of my cards. Um, a Fire, Water, Wisdom. Uh, so again, a Perform Power 5, and then just a Fire, so you're probably gonna go first. I love Nimmer, he's amazing. Um, I'm gonna call this my Desert Rares deck. Ultra Rare Headmaster in Kaija. Ooh, this train, once again. This is up YouTube, Speed Player 8 here, coming at you with another match on Trade Cards Online. What is up YouTube, Speed Player 8 here, and what I have is 288 packs of Secrets of Velocity Alliances Unraveled. Alright YouTube, what is up, Speed Player 8 here, and I have, after however many months it was, another installment in the tutorial series, so... The reason I'm doing one now is because, well, A, I kind of forgot about it, and B, um, 88 Galu just did a tutorial, uh, which reminded me, and his is actually really good, so you should see an annotation popping up somewhere on your screen. You can click that and go watch his video. It's very good if you're a beginner and just learning the game. But um, this one, so I've taught you guys about abilities, um, you know, like what, what certain abilities mean, build points, uh, disciplines, initiatives. All that stuff. So now I'm gonna show you guys a specific, a specifically tailored video to illustrate actual gameplay and how you're properly supposed to play the game. So I've made two 66 decks, one the Pettian and one Overworld. And so the way, so you've both um, arrived at uh, your tournament. You've set up your playmats. Um, on your playmats, you have these meters, which are extremely useful. So the gray one is for energy, and then as you can see, courage, power, wisdom, speed. I'm using pennies, just because they they fit into these columns nicely. You can use dimes if you want, because they're smaller, or if you have some other kind of token you wish to use, um, that'd be okay too. So then you set up um, your board. Uh, Alright, so you have your six creatures. You can start face down, um, but anyways, the first thing you have to do is determine who gets the first attack, i.e. whose location is going to be first. So, what I like to do, it usually has to be a random method. So you can do rock, paper, scissors. Um, you can flip a coin, because we got coins here. What I like to do is dice. So you have two dice that are the same. I have two six-sided dice here. So you, both players are going to roll. So the Petian player rolls. And that's a five. Overworld player rolls. That's a four. So the Petian player is going to go first. So, do the location. Illusionary Lake. Now, another thing you have to do that's really important is you have to make sure you have a way of keeping track of your Mugit counters, which is what the dice can be used for as soon as you're done rolling. So, every player, you just start off, you put Mugit counters, you can use coins if you want, but I like dice because they have number sides that you can change to to fit your appropriate Mugit counter needs. So the Petian deck is Setmac, two Wakeys, and then Komo Purified, Master and Kaija, and Jod Dixite Defender. So alright, you assign them all your counters, that's good. And then the Overworld deck is Gimli. There's one. Come on, one. There we go. We got Gimli, Zerve Monsoon Defender. Sorry guys, I'm just, this might be a little bit longer just because it's like all the processes of how you set up. And then in the back we've got Nazarin Fumo for, or sorry, Nazarin Heimuge of the Lake. Uh, Loma Desert Wanderer. And Karaba. Alrighty, so the game has started. So you flip all battle gear that says as you guys already know. So like the Mepetian Ball of Flute here, it says, reveal this battle gear at the beginning of the game. Alright, so you have to do that. That's absolutely mandatory. Karaba has one too. And now, uh, none of these battle gears here say that, but I have Setmech, and his ability is, at the beginning of your turn, flip a battle gear to Setmech face up. So your turn means your location, and so you flip this up. Mirrors of Misplacement. So, I've never actually used this before. 
When a Muji card goes to the general discard pile, discard an attack card, then draw an attack card. Very useful. Alrighty, so, um, you're going to draw two attack cards into your hand as soon as the first location is revealed, no matter what. So, I obviously need my hands to, like, move stuff and illustrate things for you guys, so I'm just going to put them on the floor, but in real life they would be in your actual hand. So, you draw, you got Earth Shape, and Hurl Game. Not the best hand. Another thing. With your Mewtwo cards, you can keep them on the board, but as with the old side and non-trade cards online, you, you're, they're in your actual hand, so you can always see them, which is what I recommend you do when you're physically playing. So you just hold them in your hand along with your attack cards. We've got Cadence, Bonding, Battle Song. Sorry if the video is a bit dark, guys, because I know the flash can be annoying, so I decided to leave it like this. Allegro, Switch Rift, Silent Requiem, Melody Mirage. For the Overworld. Two attacks are Inner Flood. Flame Bloom. Your Mugics are Rhyme the Reckless, Fanfare of Elemental Champions, Strain of the Tide, Interlude of Interruption, er, Fluid Fugue, and Refrain of Denial. Alright, so, one sec. Alright, so we're going to strive from this position now. So, Illusionary Lake is the location. So, engaged creatures lose elements like water and cannot gain it. Initiative water. So the Petians are the ones who are attacking. So, let's see. Uh, let's say, just to illustrate something for you guys, Como is going to attack Nazarin. Loma has a defender, so she's going to take his place and going to fight Como instead. So when you defend, you have to swap places with the creature that you are defending. Her gear goes face up. She goes to Nazarin's spot. Nadrin goes to her spot. Colmo's gear goes face up. Drill Dozer. And we can now begin combat. Loma has the Destructive Zuka. So when Destructive Zuka is revealed, choose an elemental type. Uko creature gains element 5 and of the chosen. So you gain the element and element 5. So I'm going to choose Fire and Fire 5. Alright, so Loma is going to have Fire and Water normally, but the location takes her Water, so only Fire and Fire 5. She had Water, so she's going to go first. So then you set all your stats. So 65 Energy, so we move this one up to 65. 70 Courage. 55 Power. 80 Wisdom. 50 Speed. Okay, so you show them all there. And this is so you and your opponent can keep track of things. Now, Colmo. It's 40 energy scanned, so we can just do that first. Look at anything else. So the drill loser, so we're going to add 20, put him at 60. He has 60 courage, 50 power, 45 wisdom, and 90 speed. Scanned. Now we look at any other effects. So we've got two awakies, and Colmo has uh, invisibility. Because Loma has at least one element, which is fire, because she lost her water. So the two awakies give him each 20 speed, so we're going to add 40 speed, put him at 130. Now, if your number goes beyond the range, you can, like, I don't know, if you want to add a piece of paper going higher, but, you know, you can usually keep track of it in your head. And it usually won't that matter because you're going to win all your challenges. So, since Loma has initiative, she's going to draw the first or third attack card into her hand. Look at what we've got. I'm going to play Consuming Flame. So, again, again, all this is in your hand, and your opponent isn't seeing it, but I, can't, I have to put it here because I need to move stuff around. So, you take this, and then you put it face down in the attack discard pile. So this will start a burst. A burst is what you do to resolve music and abilities that have been played. So, as soon as I play this attack, I am allowed to play something else in response. So we look at our music, look at our abilities. No activated abilities on the front line. Can't play Rhyme of the Reckless yet. Como hasn't played an attack. You could use this to gain water, except Illusionary Lake says cannot gain it, so that's not going to work. Refrain of Denial, your opponent hasn't played anything yet. Alright, you guys get how this works. So, you can assess the damage right away. And then if you're not going to respond right away to your own attack, then your opponent may respond. So, so what we've got. Switch Rift, Cyber Requiem, Money Mirage can be saved for later. Allegro. This could be useful. 
Dark creature gains 50 speed. If Engage creature gains initiative this turn, Allegro's cost is zero. So this cost would be zero, and you could play it, but you don't have to. Right now. So Kalmo is not going to respond. All right, so this does 20 damage, and then you subtract 20 from your energy, and then along with the damage, you do any other abilities that would be present. All right. So now that one player has attacked, the other player may respond with their own attack. So draw a sand strike. We're gonna play that. So Kalmo plays sand strike. You add up all the damage. So five base damage, five air damage, five earth damage. Kalmo has error, so that's 15. He has invisibility strike 10 because Loma only has fire, so that's 10 strike, so that's 25. You take away keys, that is plus 5, plus 5 for the two of them, so that is a total of 35. Now, as soon as he plays that, he might want to play something else, but he doesn't. So now we can look at our music and decide what we want to play. Well, we're going to play a Rhyme of the Reckless. So first you have to take a Muji counter, so let's go off of Gimli, and then you can play your Muji. Now if it's going to be a big burst, you can start a burst pile. So we can just put it all on the side. So we go Sand Strike, Run of the Reckless. As soon as you play something, then your opponent gets a chance to respond. Well, Kong's energy is pretty low, so we don't want him to get instantly cutted right away. So we're going to take one counter off Zig Dig Site Defender here. We're going to use Silent Requiem to negate the music that targets a creature with invisibility. Colmo has invisibility, Find the Reckless is targeting him, so we're going to play that. Now the Overworlders can respond. So, that is not really going to work out well for us. So we take one off Zerve, and we're going to play Interlude to Interruption. Gate target Mugic unless the casting creature of that Mugic pays an additional Mugic counter. Now, the casting creature of this is Jod. He only had one Mugic counter. He has no Mugic counters. So this is going to go through. Alright. And then we're going to stop there. So, then the way the burst works is last in, first out. So the way this works is you take the thing on top of the pile, which is this interlude of interruption, and do what it says. Alright, so negate target Mugic unless casting creature pays an additional Mugic counter. This silent requiem gets negated, so this science purpose, it goes to the discard. As soon as a Mugic, if a Mugic gets dispelled or negated, and if there's no other effects, then it goes to the discard, or if it just goes through, it goes to the discard. So, this was negated, so its effect doesn't resolve, so it goes to the Mopedian discard. Rhyme of the Reckless goes through, so when target attack controlled by an opponent resolves, deal X damage to target engaged creature where X is the damage that attack dealt. So, that goes away. Then this attack resolves for 35 damage. So, Loma's gonna take 35, so 65 minus 35, so we can just go 35, that's 30. 40 minus 35 is 5. Okay? Now the Overworlders are attacking. The other consuming flame. Alright, so we look at our options. This is going to deal 20, this is going to do nothing, and this is going to deal 5 damage and heal 5. Okay, so we're going to play that for 5 damage. Oh, but we forgot one thing. Yeah, I, kn I knew I would forget about this. Alright, so. Mirrors of Misplacement. You gotta remember these things. When a music card goes to general discard pile, draw an attack card, then dr discard an attack card, sorry, then draw an attack card. So here is our attack hand. So a total of, let's see, one, two, three went to the discard. So we're going to discard and draw three attack cards. So you know what? We don't want to lose our air damage. So we're going to get rid of her looking. Draw. Well, Snappy Acceleration is better than the Earth Shape. So we're going to discard that. Draw. Alright, so we Slow Sand does more damage. Just going to discard Snappy Acceleration and draw. So that's 
three discard and draw. So then, yeah, discard. So just to review, we discarded Hurricane, drew um, uh, Synaptic Acceleration, we discarded Earthshake, we drew Slow Sand, and we discarded Synaptic Acceleration and drew Aftermath Faint. So that's where we're going to stop. Okay, so it's still the Overworld's attack, but we're just going over this ability. Alright, so, oh, well, sorry, sorry. sorry guys, I know this is going a bit long, but I'm trying to try to wrap it up soon. This is just a bit of a complicated thing to do. So, the Flame Bloom. We're not going to save Calmo, because wasting a Melody Mirage on 5 damage isn't really a good idea. So, Calmo is going to go away. When your creature gets defeated, they go to the general discard pile, and any battle gear that was equipped to them goes to the general discard pile as well. Now... You can move around other creatures. Only the attacking player can move around other creatures. So let's say that, uh, I don't know, we just want to move Headmaster over and Jot over. And then this goes onto someone's spot. We're going to put it on Jod's spot. Then the, oval, then the turn is done. Then the overall is attack. Alright, so Gigantopolis. So you guys get how this is going. We're going to... You guys have seen how combat works. That's pretty much how combat works. We're going to keep attacking until we're down to... The way you win the game is you kill all of your opponent's creatures. But there is one thing I want to show you guys. So you've seen all the music, so you guys understand how all that works. Um, but let's just do a quick thing for another bit of burst. So location burst. To my knowledge, the only location that doesn't start a burst is Drenicus Threshold Dawn of Param. So as soon as you flip a location, that starts a burst, and you can add music and abilities to it. So that's my location, so I'm going to add uh, my Petty and Baldir Sloop to the burst by sacrificing it. You can wait for your opponent, then it's your opponent's turn. So, nothing really to play, opponent passes. My uh, overall turn again. You can sack the other on Petty and Baldir Sloop. So they still haven't resolved yet, and then we're still looking. Not really anything you want to play. So then your opponent passes, and then the overall passes. The wet, when a burst, the way you resolve a burst is as soon as both players pass on adding something to the burst, then you stop it, and then you resolve whatever's been added. So this one is Nadrin's Flute. So he gains a Muji counter. Put him up to three. That's three. And then your opponent can add Muji counter to any creature of their choice. So we're going to say a Wakey for two. Then, alright, so that's done. Then Crab has been petting ball to your flute. We're gonna go to four. And then your pumpkin add a music counter. We're gonna say set mech. Alright, so then that's it. Both these are in the discard. Now it's your attack. So we're gonna say, um, let's go with Dalgad attacks Jod. Alright, so Dalgad has the Scarab of Kali, which says, uh, Equip creature, and creatures engaged with it cannot lose elemental types. So Dalgad cannot lose his fire and water, so the Mirage effect of Illusionary Lake is negated. Then Jod flips his battle gear face up. Drill those are. We set our stats and energy, so Dalgad has... 60 energy, 60 courage, 80 power, 85 wisdom, 50 speed. Jod has 50 energy scanned, 70 with the drill dozer, 75 courage, 105 speed, but then we have the awakies, so that becomes 145, break in the bank, 40 wisdom, and 55 power. Now we look at initiative, initiative power. Dalgad has 80, John has 55, so he is the, Dalgad has the most, so he goes first. Now, because of that, Headmaster's ability is going to be activated when Jod attacks, so if you lost initiative, your engaged creature gains strike 10. Now, one misconception people have is that this is invisibility. So say Jod did not have invisibility strike 15, but he still gained the strike 10. This would not count as invisibility, and so you wouldn't get the awakey boost. 
This is like the Strike 10 on Takinam Shadow Knight. It is exactly the same. It's not invisibility, it's just the additional 10 damage, but you can use it to manipulate the invisibility effects. Okay? So, anywho. Dalgat draws. Yeah, Perplexing Heat, Consuming Flame, and Inner Flood. Ah, but we forgot the location ability. So, at the beginning of combat, all bursts have resolved. Each engaged old creature gains a Mutual Counter. Dalgat Dalga is an Overworlder, so we're going to put one Mutual Counter on him. Alrighty, so then it's my turn to attack. I'm going to play Perplexing Heat. It's going to do 20, because I have Fire, I have Water. Dalgat's ability makes an additional 5. And then he has fire, so Jad is going to lose 25 wisdom. You can choose to add something to the burst. Strain of the tide, can't use it yet. Fluid few, can't use it yet because you haven't taken any damage. Uh, Fanfare of Elemental Champions, we're not using air or earth in this deck, so we can't use that. And frame denial, your opponent hasn't played immediate yet. Now, we don't want to lose two fighters in a row. So, we're going to play Melody of Mirage off this awakening on your attack. Alright, so then you can add something to that, or no you can't. So, the attack has been played, the attacking player declined and added something to the attack, the defending player adds something to the burst, and then we can look at our options and say, well, we're gonna play, so Nadrin's ability is Nadrin pays one less Muji counter to play Muji cards for a minimum of one, so he's gonna play one Muji counter, to put him at 2, to play Refrain of Denial, and then you Dispel Target Mugic. Alright, sorry guys, so Dispel Target Mugic, the Target Mugic is the Melody of Mirage. Alright, so then the opposing, the opposing player gets to add something to the burst, so we don't want our Melody of Mirage to be dispelled, so we're going to play one Mugic counter off of Wakey to play Cadence Clash. Now, remember what I said, to keep track of these things, it's best to start a burst pile. So you can do this as you're playing it, or you can just go back and do it. So, Perplexing Heat, then we had Melody of Mirage, and then Refrain of Denial, and then Cadence Clash, and then I'm not going to add any more music or abilities to it. So then, last in, first out. So Cadence Clash is last in, negate target music card, and, re and return that card to its owner's hand. Well, the target music is uh, Refrain of Denial, so this has done its job, it goes to the discard. Refrain of Denial goes back to the hand, this is the hand, again, in your actual hand. Melody Mirage goes through, target attack deals zero damage. So this is going to deal zero, however, any abilities are still going to go through. So opposing Gage creature loses 25 wisdom. So the guy to take 25 wisdom away from Dig Sight Defender, so he's going to be at 15. Okay, so if you want to negate an attack ability, then you have to use um, Aegis Area or something else, because Melody Mirage only stops the damage. Um, so you guys get how that works. Um, let's just say we keep going. So Dalgad plays an attack, Flaming Coals, Jad draws. Or sorry, it's Jad's attack. So Jad draws. We're gonna play acceleration for uh, 55. So Dal adds up five, and then we're gonna heal Grabba. You guys get how this works. We're gonna keep playing. So it's gonna heal 30, 35. Dal attacks. Flaming cools. 35, and Jod goes to 35, and then we're going to play Slow Sand for 20, that's uh, bringing our Dalgad down a bit much, so Nadrin is going to pay 1 to play Fluid Few, kill 25 third creature, cast a Muji Counter, has water, that creature gains a Muji Counter. So, that is going to be a lot of heal, which you can take advantage of as a Mopedian. So we're going to play one music counter off of Set Mech. And Bonding Battle Song. Or no, that doesn't work. See? If I did that, then this would not work because 
When target opposing creature heals or gains energy from a magic or activated ability, the caster of this magic also heals and gains that much energy. So Setmac could not make this work. If I played this, nothing would happen because Jod would have to be the one playing it, but he already used his magic counter, so that's not going to work. Common mistake, I made it myself. It's uh, you're just thinking on your feet and you think about that. Okay, so Fluid Fugue, nothing happens to stop it. So Dalgad heals, let's see, 25, goes back up to 60, gains Mutual Counter. Put him at 2, and Azure's at 1. Alright, so let's just say this keeps on going and going, and then Jod eventually gets defeated. So, sorry, Jod would go to the general discard pile with his battle gear. I oh, was running a bit long, guys. I'm sorry. I'll uh, wrap it up soon. So then Dalgad, since he was the attacking creature, because if you noticed, um, if Como had won, then he would have moved to Loma's spot, but he didn't, so nothing happens. So since Dalgad was the attacking creature and he won, he moves into that spot, and that's that. Now I'm going to show you guys the showdown and how that works. Alright guys, so for the last thing, the showdown. The showdown is what happens when um, you haven't been, there hasn't been a fight for three turns, and then you have to um, pick a creature your opponent controls for both players, and then they fight, so I'm going to illustrate this. So you, this usually happens late in the game when each each player only has one or two creatures left. So my Petians only have Headmaster and Kaiju left, and the overall we've only got High Mute and Gimli. So it's Mepedian's attack. The Darkened Dunes. So, you just Earth Gain Range and Swift. Let's say Master is gonna go there. All right, and that's it. And then this location goes down at the bottom of your attack deck or location deck. Next is Overworld, Kiru City. Gimway goes here, and then you can move Nadrin as well. Alrighty, so then that location goes to the bottom, and then, so you can set tab of dig site. So we're going to move Headmaster and Kaija here. Now, he hasn't been engaged, there hasn't been a battle in three turns, so what we do is, a one picks one creature controlled by the overworld, so pick, um, you know what? Let's just make this interesting for you guys. We're gonna pick Gimway, and then you have to pick an opponent or a creature controlled by your opponent. So Overworld picks the Master since he's the only creature left. And then we are going to play. We're gonna start combat. So Battle Gear goes face up. Face up. Uh, Headmaster has Zerium Armor. You guys haven't actually seen me use this in a live deck. I probably will soon. Um, so make sure the Battle Gear doesn't start a burst. And then Gimway's battle gear is the Orcs Undin. Alright, so we're going to look at the rules. So if you have a rule book, they are extremely useful. So, the two selected creatures become engaged in combat initiated with the following changes. Instead of the normal initiative rules using the active location, initiative is determined in a random manner using any method agreed agreed by to both players. So, you, again, it's like you're starting the game. You rock, paper, scissors, dice roll, or uh, coin flip. The creature who wins the showdown is returned to the battle board in its own starting space. So, I believe that what that means is that your mirage effects won't work. This is a bit hazy for me. Because um, Headmaster would be attacking, so we're in this space, so the mirage effect won't work, but if he wins, then he's going to be here and not advance. But anywho. So we've already got... I had to shuffle. So you've got your two cards that you already have in your hand. Okay, and then you have to determine who goes first again. So, Petty and Rolls. So three. Overworld Rolls. So four. Overworld goes first. Alrighty, so we're going to set our stats and energy. So 65, 80... 
I'm sorry if the camera work is also a bit bad because I'm not going to look at the meter, so I can't look in, in the camera screen the whole time. So Headmaster has CT5 Energy, Courage, and Power, 40 Wisdom, 95 Speed, 95. Alrighty, so, but at the beginning of combat, each player reveals the top two cards in their attack deck. So Gimway is going to go first, but anyways. So he reveals Piercing Brilliance and Gear Grind. Any player who reveals three or more total build costs and attacks puts two energy counters on an engaged creature. Put their revealed cards on the bottom of the attack deck in any order. So we're gonna do like this. Let you go on the bottom. Headmaster has to do it as well. So let's sand. Ashmouth. So that's not a build cost of three or more. So it goes on the bottom. Nobody gains the two energy counters. Alright, so then we start the match, start the battle rather, with the fight. So, Gimway plays Flood Force, Headmaster takes 15 damage, goes to 50. Headmaster draws, play Acceleration, check the speed on creatures, so Headmaster has 95 speed, Gimway has 40, so that's enough for the challenge, so 30, and then 15 with his strength. So that's 45 damage to Gimway. Gimway is at, let's see, 20. And then Gimway's effect is triggered, so that's going to start a burst. That's going to kick in. So Adam Master is going to take an additional 5. Gimway draws, plays the other Flood Force for 15. So Headmaster goes to 30. Will go to 30, rather, but then on the burst. So he's not quite there yet. Um, Gimway cast Strain of the Tide for zero cost. So you're going to remove all overworlders. Now remove any number of overworld, overworld creatures in your discard pile from the game. Heal 10 damage to our creature for each card removed this way. So we're going to remove 1, 2, 3, 4. That's all the overworlders in your discard pile. I don't know, I'm mistaken. Nope, that's all. So, it's four, so that's 40 heal, and then they go away from the game, so you can just put them back in your binder or whatever. So, Gimli goes up to 60. Alrighty, the Netmaster. It's his turn to attack, so he's at 30 from the Flood Force. And Funnel Blast for 15. Gimli's at 45. Draw, play Piercing Brilliance. Again, guys, I'm really sorry if it can't work. This would, if I had some way to do this online, I would. Or if I had another person, but it's just kind of me. So Piercing Brilliance for 15. Headmaster is at 15 energy, and his Wisdom is at 25. Okay. Headmaster draws, plays Poison Sphere for 15. So Gimway is at 30, and Speed is at 25. No, 15. Okay, so Headmaster only has 15 health left, or energy rather, and Gimli plays Consuming Flame for 20 damage, and the kill, and that's how Showdown works. So, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Uh, I'm sorry for the fact that this is almost 33 minutes long. Um, but yeah, I'm Speedplayer A, this is another installment in the tutorial series. Um, if you haven't already, you can check out the Gallows tutorial video. Uh, if you haven't, sign, sign the petition already, I'm going to link to that as well. Uh, Alright guys, peace, see you later.